I was really surprised when I learned that most junior developer jobs never make their way to LinkedIn before they're filled. Anyway, LinkedIn is kind of competitive and a little bit oversaturated, so in this video I'm going to present you with some lesser known websites where you can look for opportunities as a new developer, irrespective of your experience. Hi, my name is Alex and I interview newly hired developers about how they found success on my podcast, the Scrimber podcast. I've been through the archives to see what I can learn and done some additional research to present you with this list of websites where you can find job openings as a new developer. Obviously, I'm going to link all of the websites in the description, so if you just want the links, don't worry, I've been there. Please just like the video on the way down to the description. This list isn't ordered, by the way, I don't think there is one best place, I don't think there's a worst place, because it will surely depend on your circumstances. But I wish to start with LinkedIn because I want to explain why, actually, most new developer jobs don't seem to make their way onto that platform. I will be very direct. Companies have to pay LinkedIn to post, not promote or sponsor, post their jobs on the platform. I read it was something like $350. And it's for that reason that most companies, when they have a junior developer role, they will post it to their own careers page because it effectively costs them nothing. Maybe as a matter of process, they will submit it to some job boards and things like that. But generally speaking, it's only when the company are struggling to fill the role that they will post it to LinkedIn, which means that first of all, some snappy candidates might have already started applying and filled the hiring pipeline before the job ever made it to LinkedIn, meaning the company has no motivation to pay to post it on the platform. I'm not for one minute trying to disregard LinkedIn. In fact, I've met several new developers who have found the job opportunity they're currently working at through LinkedIn. It can be a very effective place to find a role. But what I would strongly urge you to do is to combine LinkedIn with another website on this list to maximize your chance of success. Here's a little bonus tip for you. And in fact, I'm going to try and sprinkle a few of these into the video. If you are on LinkedIn and you see that like hundreds of people have applied, I get it, that can be quite deterring, but I strongly encourage you to ignore that because you cannot be sure about the qualifications of these people applying. I'm quite aware that in the introduction I told you about these niche, lesser known job sites. I promise they're coming. I just want to get this kind of typical one out of the way first, which is job boards. I would say, depending on your country, find out the most popular and respected job boards. You know, for example, in the UK, that's likely to be Indeed, Read, Monster. Another good one, which I think is a bit more international, is Glassdoor. Glassdoor in particular, I quite like because they tend to show the salary range more often based on their data. I believe they sometimes estimate the salary range, which is better than nothing. But also Glassdoor invites previous and current employees to write about their employer and the company, which could be a good way for you to determine whether their values align with yours and therefore your likelihood of gliding through the interview process. As if there is that compatibility, of course your technical skills play a role, but this will just serve to grease the wheels, helping you to choose and apply to the jobs that will give you the most likelihood of success. I'm very sure you knew about job boards already, but I want to tell you something based on my experience interviewing successful developers, which is that sometimes people tell me, they say, you know, I'm struggling to find junior developer jobs on these job boards. Most of them don't specify the seniority or they're specifically looking for senior developers. What I would say to that is that not every junior developer job is advertised as a junior developer job, as crazy as that might sound. There are some jobs called developer or web developer or full stack developer or front end developer that just do not denote the seniority that they expect. And the way I would encourage you to look at that is like an invitation to apply irrespective of your skill level. It could be interpreted that if they don't say junior or senior, they mean a mid-level type of person. There could be some elements of truth to that. The difficulty in our industry is that there are no such thing as like uniform job titles. Every company picks and chooses what titles they want to use, whether that's developer or engineer, junior or apprentice, right? And as a result, you can't always be sure about their intention. 
It's true, some of these jobs advertising as developer will be hoping for people on the more senior end, but it could also be true that they're looking for some more entry-level developers such as yourself who are more malleable and can grow into the role. You know, we're ramping up here in this video, but I think a great place for anybody to start is with LinkedIn and a popular job board in your country. Do not forget to get creative with your job search because not every junior job is advertised as such. And also remember, it's your prerogative to apply if you think there's any possibility that they might like to work with you. I'm gonna sprinkle in another little bonus tip, which is to set up email alerts on your favorite job platforms, because now all the emails are coming to you instead of you having to like go to the website, set up your search filters and reload every day. That's not great for your productivity or your mental health probably. Whereas if you can just set one time every day to review the latest jobs that have come onto the market or maybe every week, then that's going to put you in much better stead, I think. Most websites have this feature, so definitely take advantage of it. Most people don't know this, but Google actually has almost a special interface for searching for jobs. If you search junior developer job, you'll probably see this SERP. And if you click into it, what you're looking at could be thought of as a special version of Google designed to search the web for jobs. If Google knows your location based on your permissions, it will search in your local area by default, but there's also an option to choose, I think it's called like remote jobs or work from anywhere jobs, which is spot on in 2022. I think it's great that Google are doing this. I should be clear though, that I think this is a relatively new thing. It's not available in all countries, although I'm sure it's available in the UK and North America. Moreover, while it does effectively serve as a job search engine, I think that the companies have to present the job in a certain format for Google to understand it and you know, populate this interface with the details. So it won't encompass every possible type of job, but you can also, if you want, like search Google and search by most recent, for example, and that could be a way to find jobs on career pages before they even make it to job boards, allowing you to be one of the first people to apply. Remember, we're talking about like job sites and places to find jobs, not necessarily just job boards, which is why I want to ask you if you've ever heard of or considered a website like hackerjob.com or hired.com. These websites are really cool because when you make an account, they ask you tailored questions about what programming languages you know, your other proficiencies, experience, visa status, and salary ambition. Now companies can connect with you. I also believe you get assigned something called a talent acquisition advisor or, or personal talent advocates, I think. And what they will do potentially is work with you to help your profile stand out on the platform, maximizing your chance of getting hired on their website, which of course they are motivated to help you with and in turn, you know, find success in your own life. I specifically spoke with one student named Jono on the Scrimba podcast about how they found work using HackerJob. And when I used to work at this startup called Pusher based in London, we actually hired someone from Hired.com. And on their first day or their first week, Hired sent them like a goodie box with I think champagne and some hoodies and stickers and things like that. Not sure if they still do that, but I thought it was pretty cool. Makes me think they're worth taking a chance on at least. I would say, and you probably agree, that most of the websites we've just looked at are fairly mainstream, but there are an abundance of niche job boards around specific topics like working remotely or working as a junior developer that you can look to to hopefully find your first opportunity. I'm thinking of remoteok.com, which is a job board for remote first companies. As it happens, most companies posting here are tech companies, and they post about all kinds of roles like sales, marketing, but also development. Regrettably, not that many of the jobs are advertised as junior level, but you can still take my advice from earlier when it came to the job boards about applying irrespective of the um, irrespective of whether they specify the seniority in the job because they may well be prepared to hire a junior. But what I would say is that if a company is posting on a website like that, there's, it's also possible they're hiring across the company or they're hiring in different teams or for various roles. And so this could still be a great place to highlight remote first companies of a culture that you might wish to work at. There is also no CS degrees job board, which is pretty cool because I think employers for a small fee can post to advertise their job. And obviously they are only posting the job if they don't care about your official qualifications. They don't care whether you have a CS degree. Sometimes at Scrimba and the stuff I'm doing, I will post on Twitter to kind of 
see what people are thinking and see what people like. And I actually posted a thread with like some websites to find jobs. People really seem to like this website called Arg, where they have a remote junior developer and internships board. I see a few good indicators here, like how the jobs are quite recent and there are plenty of jobs, yet there aren't so many as to give us the impression that they are stale or never updated. Check it out if you like, there's links to everything in the description. Now, there are other niche job boards. I don't think I'm really here to present the most comprehensive list ever, but it's really encouraging, I think, to know that these kind of job boards exist as you might wish to expand your search further. And if you do happen to come upon a good one that I haven't considered, you know, please share it, not just for my benefit, but for everybody else watching this video with the same goal as you. I started my career at a startup, and while I don't care to generalize, I do believe that startups are a bit more informal and liberal about who they hire, irrespective of their official qualifications. I, I also don't mean to generalize when I say that some startups require you to have a lot of autonomy and responsibility, and they may not be the same place that offers the most structured sort of career progression or support framework as a new developer. There are, of course, pros and cons, but if you'd like to learn more about what options are available and if and you know see if anything takes your fancy, I can highly recommend AngelList, which is at angel.co. On AngelList, you can make a profile and fill in your sort of skills, proficiencies, experience, history, your bio, profile picture, all that stuff. And then you can start to apply to jobs at startups which are advertised on the website. As a bonus, on some rare occasions, a recruiter or a person at the tech startup might reach out to you based on your profile. So it's certainly worth putting some effort into making sure your profile reflects you and everything you can bring to a company. I have another sort of place to find startup jobs I'll share with you in a second, but here's another sort of tip. Sometimes when you apply to a job through a website like Angel or LinkedIn or Indeed, you get a very generic sort of application template, but the company would prefer you actually apply directly on their website. Therefore, sometimes you will get an email back saying, hey, thank you for your interest. Uh, we saw that you applied on AngelList, but could you actually please apply using this link directly on our website? Now, the tip here is that most jobs actually have like a job add ID somewhere on the page. And if you take this and Google it or search the company's website in particular, you can then sort of skip this phase and apply directly. It might improve your chances or at least grease the wheels. Another place you can look for new opportunities at a startup is Hacker News is monthly who's hiring post. Basically Hacker News is a link log type forum. Every month there is a discussion about what companies are hiring. And I have to be very honest and say that regrettably, most of these jobs aren't like specifically orientated at juniors, but startups and people at startups are creative problem solvers. Meaning if you see a post on this thread that says, hey, we're looking for a director of engineering and a head of this and a senior that, and then they'll sometimes say something like, PS, we are hiring across the board, so feel free to get in touch if you're interested. You know, check out the company and if it lights a spark in you and you're like, oh wow, I'd love to contribute to this and help grow this project and work in an exciting team of cool people, it's totally worth shooting your shot because you don't know, these could be the same companies that are prepared and maybe even keen to hire a junior developer. I'll also add that some companies don't have junior roles specifically advertised on their websites, but they have like a sort of additional job section which says something like, uh, do you don't see anything that applies to you, um, but you would still like to work here? You know, click here to get in touch. And I strongly believe that if they never found any success from that option, or if they didn't really care to consider you through that option, they would just remove it because it would be more headache than potentially uh, benefits who keep it. So if you see it, you might as well have a go and see what happens. Finally, and this is definitely a place to get excited, is niche communities. I'm thinking of like Telegram or Discord groups where a group of people, I would assume anywhere from like five to 50, maybe more, will share like job ads that they come across on the web that maybe don't suit them or they think would be good for the group. Moreover, they might share like, in, you know, experiences from the interview process, like what questions they were asked during the screening call, how the interview process went, how they handled the salary negotiation parts and things like that. You could build a little support network of people you know you can reach out to if you have specific questions about an opportunity you're pursuing. I have a few in mind, two or three that I learned about on Twitter and by asking some of my friends, but in truth, I've not vetted them in any great depth. Moreover, these groups sometimes come and go and I want this video to be valuable in the long term. So rather than give you specific suggestions, 
I'm just going to let you know that these things exist and encourage you to kind of keep an eye out on Twitter, in your existing communities, or even ask your friends to see if they are you know, part of or want to start a group like this with you. What I can do, however, is invite you to join the Scrimba Discord community, where we don't really share job ads that much, and sometimes it comes up, but what we share a lot is career advice in the career advice channel. And we also have this channel called I Got Hired, where successful Scrimba students post when they use the Scrimba curriculum and find success and find a junior developer job or something like that. That's often the point at which I invite them to come on the Scrimba podcast, which is another resource you can check out if you're looking for more. I will just finish this video by saying that on the Scrimba YouTube channel, I've made a couple of videos about even more creative ways to get your foot in the door. For example, reaching out to recruiters, telling them about yourself and seeing if there is a way that you can work with them. I provide the whole message templates and even rely on some interview I did with a senior recruiter on the Scrimba podcast. Like they shared some golden advice that we relay in that video. So, you know, that's to say that you don't just have to apply via job boards. There are other ways to find success. And in general, when you're thinking about job hunting strategy, it could be the right way to go to sort of combine approaches. My name is Alex Boker. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like the video if you've come this far and also subscribe. I'm also linking on the screen that video about reaching out to recruiters um, somewhere here so that you can check that out if you would like to. See you next time.